Hi everybody, what's up? My name is Juan, I am Just One Reader, and Booktubeathon is over. So this is my Booktubeathon 2017 wrap-up. So Booktubeathon lasted seven days, and it consisted of seven different challenges. I did not accomplish all the challenges, but regardless of that, I am feeling overall really impressed with myself. I think I did a pretty good job. I am not a fast reader. I am a very hyperactive person. I am not a person that can just sit around and pick up a book and read for long stretches of time. So uh, the fact that I read five books in seven days is mind boggling to me. So uh, here we go with a wrap up. The first book that I read was Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. This was of course a reread. It was part of my series rereading Harry Potter as an adult. Uh, and I chose this one for Booktubeathon for the challenge of reading a book with a person on the cover. This one, I made a separate review that you can, you can go and check that one out. I enjoyed it, but overall, I did find that there were some issues with it. I gave it four stars. And overall, I felt like this was the least enjoyable of the series during this particular reread. So yeah, just mm, not the greatest. The second book that I read for Booktubeathon was Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express. Um, so in order for me to talk about this one, I have to go back to the first book that I read by Agatha Christie, which, which was And Then There Were None, which is her most popular book other than this one. With that book, And Then There Were None, I had a little bit of an issue. Overall, I really enjoyed the beginning, the middle, the story, the mystery. I really liked how the characters were confined in this house and they started to get murdered and no one knew what's, what was happening. And then the ending came, the solution was provided and I did not buy it. I did not like the way that it was delivered to the reader. The reverse thing happened with Murder on the Orient Express. I really liked the solution to the mystery and the way that it was delivered. I thought it was fine. I believed it. I thought it was cool. I liked it. But everything else, everything that came before the solution to the problem, I found a little bit uninteresting. Um, there are some interesting aspects and some things that happen that are quite interesting. There's a murder on this train. It's a, another very confined space type of situation. And we have this very quirky character, this Sherlock Holmes type detective guy by the name of Hercule Poirot. And he interviews everyone, gathers evidence, examines the train. But I just found it a little bit uninteresting, honestly. So maybe it was just a personal thing. Uh, I gave it three stars. And this was for the challenge of reading a book that is hyped. Then the next challenge was to read a book in one day. And the book that I chose for this was a very short novella by Pascal Quignard, who is a French writer. This one is called The, the Boy with a Face the Color of Death. And this one is actually quite amazing for what it was. I think it's a book that you have to reread because... At face value, it's a good story and it's very intriguing and very beautiful, but I think it's the kind of book that will benefit from multiple uh, readings. This one is a fairy tale about a boy who is confined in a tower by his mother. This boy dedicates his life, all the moments of his, of his life to reading and he reads so much that his face becomes the color of death and every single person that comes close to this boy ends up dead. That's the premise. It's a fairy tale. You can read it in 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I think a lot of people would really enjoy it. It was very philosophical. It dealt with very important topics and themes. It was very poetic. I loved the writing, even though this is a Spanish translation from the French. So yeah, I gave it four stars. And if you can find a copy of this, I'd say give it a go. 
Then the next challenge was to read a book with a character who is very different from you. And for this, I picked a very popular book. It's very popular now. It, it has become very hyped and very well loved. This is The Clay Girl by Heather Tucker. And my opinion is going to be controversial and unpopular. And it pains me to say that I really did not like this book at all um, because I know that a lot of people really connected and really adored it. However, that was just not the case. And I am able to, you know, I, I can say, I can admit that it's not that the book is awful. <laughs> it's more that I am not the right reader for this book. And I just, I just couldn't connect to it. I found the, um, the writing to be very heavy and it just kind of got in the way a little bit for me. This follows the story of Ari, a girl who has suffered a lot of trauma in her life. She had a very abusive, violent, seriously messed up dad. Ari's father used to rape and molest and uh, abuse her children who are all females. She actually got one of them pregnant and afterwards, very nicely, he committed suicide in front of all the girls. Um, now, if that weren't bad enough, Ari's mother is a complete case. <laughs> she is actually, in my opinion, a very good portrayal of what I consider to be borderline, borderline uh, personality organization, almost psychotic. Uh, which is something that I see a lot of in my consulting room, this type of very severely damaged patients, very abusive, violent, envious, incapable of anything good. Um, and uh, so Ari has suffered a lot. She has been part of this very traumatized, uh, dysfunctional, broken family. And we follow her as she grows up. It's kind of a coming of age story and there are some elements that I enjoyed but overall I found the writing whimsical and poetic as it was which at times was enjoyable I overall was kind of done with it but by the end I was just done with it I, I thought it was way too much and like I said at the beginning I thought it was interfering with the actual characters and with the actual plot um, and I did not like that I also didn't like how everything started to feel unbelievable and there came a point like halfway through the book where I felt like I was watching a very bad Mexican soap opera, a telenovela. Like I just did not like the story. I thought it was almost a little life unbelievable <laughs> and I just couldn't connect to it. I didn't care for any of the characters, well, some of the characters, some of the characters, but even the characters that I liked. I thought were incredibly unrealistic. And that's something that I also didn't like about this book. The evil characters are literally the craziest, most severely damaged people with no redeeming qualities whatsoever. Whereas the good people, the, the people that are nice to Ari, are these heavenly figures, uh, angel-like people that just want to do good in the world and they think that Ari is the greatest thing that's ever happened. So I just found it very, very, very uh, unbelievable. And overall, it's a book that I can admire in some regards, but just not for me. And I gave it two stars and I thought it was pretty generous because I was very annoyed at the book, very frustrated, upset. Uh, and two stars, I gave it two stars instead of a lower because I thought the writing had some good qualities at first and I admired some of the things that she was trying to do, the author, but no, not for me. The next challenge was to read a book completely outdoors and I kind of cheated. I did not read it completely outdoors. I read sections of it outdoors, but I did stare out of the window a lot. <laughs> and I read The Secret of Platform 13. This is a uh, middle grade fantasy by Eva Ibotson. This will appeal to people who enjoy Harry Potter, Neil Gaiman, Philip Pullman, Roald Dahl, all this kind of quirky, whimsical, very funny British middle grades. This is excellent. I thought 
it was amazing and even though I had already read it like 15 years ago, I kid you not, 15 years ago, I still felt like I was reading it for the first time and it was such a treat. It was a delightful experience um, and not only was it fun and exciting and adventurous and quirky and funny, it was also quite heavy and quite... Um, it addressed a lot of really important social political, cultural things, uh, which is something that astounded me because just by looking at this cover, you would not expect this book to comment a lot on those kinds of issues. And reading it as an adult really made me, uh, re really shocked me and surprised me in a very positive way. I gave this four or 4.5 out of five stars. Even if you are an adult, I would recommend you to try this author. Those are all the books that I did finish. Uh, the sixth one is Idaho by Emily Ruskovich. I am currently on the first chapter. The chapters are very long. I am on page 40 and I am loving it. I chose this for the challenge of reading a book that you bought because of its cover, which, oh, this is stunning. But regardless of the beautiful cover, it is a beautiful story, beautiful very messed up, but I think this is the type of book that I will really enjoy. Um, it's haunting and the, the, the writing is kind of exactly what I wanted. So uh, you will see this in my next wrap up and, you know, cross your fingers that it will be as good as it is right now. And the last challenge was to read seven books. I did not do this. The book that I did not even start was Mary Poppins by P.L. Travers. I will read that after I finish Idaho and I will see you on the next wrap up video to talk about more things. Now, tell me what was your experience like during Booktubeathon? Did you participate? How? What did you do? What did you read? What was your favorite book during Booktubeathon? What was the most disappointing book during Booktubeathon? Just tell me in the comments down below and we can start chatting about this experience. See you later.